Hi guys, welcome back to Bean Run Sound Garage. What goes uh, on before you make a video uh, isn't seen, and I'll just show you a little bit what went on. We had to move the orange quad. We had to move the blue racing quad. We had to put two gallons of antifreeze in the dusty one. We had to hook up a quickly clack fuel pump, put a battery in it, air up a couple tires on the front because they were low. We had to move uh, the big TV that's been my TV for 20 years. It's a piece of junk. won't come on, so it ended up being outside. Outside TV. <laughs> and we had to fight the dusty one out of the spot. Now, for some reason, the dusty one was running crappier than ever. I don't know why. I guess the carburetor and the fuel system and the fuel, you know, the fuel in the gas tank is really old, stale, and pretty much just bad. <clears throat> and the carburetor's junk. Timing's way off. So it wasn't running up the peak, and the clutch wasn't working right for some reason. I don't know if I couldn't get it in gear all the way or what was going on, but she wasn't moving. She wasn't running good, and uh, fuel vapors were burning my eyes, no brakes, and it was just a pain in the butt to get it out of that spot right there and get it up around the back. I had to back all the way out up to where Piggy is then drive all the way around and out through the field out there that I cut with the mower yesterday and get it in the parking spot that it's in. Unfortunately, I took my son's parking spot, so he'll have to park behind the van tonight. So we're getting a line of cars again behind all this, and you know, which the ultimate goal is to get the Challenger out. But that's okay because I'm going to move the truck here forward. I'm going to try to, uh, probably going to push the, uh, the Mustang, I'll drive the Mustang out of the way and get it out of there in the, in the, the go-kart, uh, move all these tires, move the rollback, probably back this thing up, and then take it forward, go around the boom truck, probably move the trailer, and then put it alongside the the uh, two-car uh, carport, the monster one there, and get it out of the way. And then once this is out of the way, I'll park the rollback somewhere, and then, you know, just simple case of moving them off in a hearse. Then we're to the challenger. So that's one of my main goals I'm trying to accomplish here. I don't know if I'll get it done in the next few days, but I don't care. It's going to get done. I don't, I'm not going to put a time limit on it. You know, it might take me a, another week to get it all done, but, you know, my ultimate goal is to get them cars out of the grass too. You know, so far I've got two out, actually three, including the Barracuda, because it was stuck in the front field, the 65 six cylinder Cuda. And now it's out and running. And that was a goal of mine to get that car running for my son. And the dusty one, it was scary to bring it over here. Never been scared of this car. Uh, but it scared me today. But no brakes and the fuel uh, just, you know, the fumes were just burning my eyes. And it brightened the you-know-what out of me. But we got the dusty one over here. Our last video cut off. I don't know why. I didn't drop the phone this time. But we got the car over here, and it was just a, a huge endeavor. I didn't do it in the morning like I wanted to. It looked like rain coming in. Um, I took a nap. <laughs> I have been feeling the best lately. I've been making videos every day, trying to, you know, grind and, you know, make the, you know, the best videos I can for you guys. So there's something you can enjoy on my channel and even some point and laugh at, you know. <laughs> If I could have showed this whole video, you guys would have been laughing because if you could have seen the look on my face with my eyes burning and the expression on my face was like, ah, you know, my eyes were about ready to look like I was just about ready to cry because they were burning so bad. And my hands were shaking. I was scared that, you know what, with this car. It scared me. I've never been scared of this car before. You know, I, I've had it in the back of my mind before driving it around in the field and playing with it. No brakes. It's pretty dangerous. But I've never been really scared, you know, and, and it scared me today. This thing scared me. So I'm going to have to back up and punt on the dusty one. <clears throat> and we'll have to fix this fuel system, you know, get a fuel pump to it, you know, mechanical. Get this gas drained out, get a fresh uh, carburetor and gas, maybe a new gas tank in it. And I do got a fresh carburetor for it, get the timing dialed in. And after all that's done, 
you know, we know it's going to need a couple tires in the front. We just changed the tires in the back, and, you know, I'm pretty happy with them. Clutch the brake line, and, you know, that's definitely an order for the dusty one. We get some of that done, and then it's just a matter of uh, some body work and some, throw some paint on it. Um, do a little bit of more interior, uh, you know, work to it. It does need quite a bit of interior work. But, you know, a little at a time, you know. Don't have a lot of money to do what I want to do to it, you know. Of course, if I had the money, I'd send it out to, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Dare I say it? Graveyard Cars. I'd send it to him and have him completely do it, you know, take two or three years to do it. But I don't have that kind of money. And, you know, I know there's people out there that wouldn't send nothing to him. Pole barn garage was, oh, you'd have to drink water. Or, well, he said, drink beer out of my floorboard. Well, I'd never drink beer out of your floorboard, buddy. buddy. You'd be drinking beer out of my floorboard before I ever drink beer out of your floorboard. That's for damn sure. But regardless, you know, he's, you know, he is what he is. You know, he's a Mopar guru. And in my opinion, he does one of the best restoration you know, jobs on, you know, Mopars, you know, Chrysler, Dodge, Plymouth. He's about the best in the business. You know, his company, it's not all him doing the work. But he does help some. He's probably more like a Richard Rollins and just orders people and goes and checks it, you know, and see if it's right. But his company really does a good job. I mean, I wish I had that kind of money it would take to send this car there. And it's never going to happen. At least not right now. It's not going to happen. Well, we got her out here, and that's what the important thing is. So three of the cars that we've uh, been tinkering with here are out all together, kind of like a family, you know, kind of an oddball in the middle there, <laughs> the Oldsmobile. And we got the Plymouth 65 Barracuda. We put an ignition switch in it, got it running. We got the Dusty one, the 74 Plymouth Duster, 318 four-barrel, three-speed on the floor, manual shift. And then the Oldsmobile, the Omega, we like to call the Omega, because if she may go, she may not go. But believe it or not, this thing is more dependable, and, and I think it's more safety-wise, it's better than a Dusty, because it's got brakes. You know, the power steering's acted up yesterday, but that's just a matter of putting a belt on another belt and tightening it up, you know, because it is missing a power steering belt. It's just got one belt for the, the whole shebang. It's supposed to have a separate power steering belt. This vehicle, I believe, had air conditioning. Pretty sure it had air. Somebody ripped a whole air conditioning box out of it. I believe this was an air conditioning car. Yeah, with all the belts on it. So there's a separate belt right here. It goes in this groove here, over to that groove, just for the power steering. And it doesn't line up. This engine's been, been swapped. So, yeah. That's not going to work unless it'll run up off the crank. No. None of the lines up, so it's going to be hard to put a power steering belt on it. It's a separate belt like it's supposed to have. None of the pulleys line up. This engine's a later model 350 rocket, out of, I believe it was a 78 or something. And this is a 73. You know, the engine's supposed to have points. So you can see it's got an ATI distributor. So it's nothing's right on this car. But we gave $500 for it. And, uh, you know, I just love the car, you know. Um, you know, it's the only second Oldsmobile I ever had. And I'm not really the Oldsmobile man. But the first Oldsmobile was a 1980 Cutlass Supreme. And when I had that, I was pro Oldsmobile. I sold the car. I'm still kicking myself in the ass for selling it, and I'll never do it again. And the 73 Olds Omega, along with the other cars, aren't for sale. So, you know, unless you've got a shit pile of money, you can't get these cars. I mean, there's just, you know, there's some cars here that I won't sell. I don't care how much money you got. There's a 68 Dodge Coronet over here, and I don't care if you got a million dollars. You're not going to ever touch that car. It's got this uh, old Dodge smell in it that reminds me of my great older brother and only brother, Randall L. Beamer. And it smells like his Dodge Monaco. I haven't been into it for, oh, a while, I guess probably a year, but 
last time I was in it, it still had that Dodge smell. Sure hope it's still there. And that's why I won't sell that car. Because it reminds me of my brother who's, of course, passed on. And it reminds me of the smell of his car. Oh, there's two of the kids. There's all three of them. There's a third one there. And this one here now, I made friends with this one here. Them two there run from me. But this one here, me and this one's buddies now. Look at that. Is that the prettiest kitten? There's three outside and one precious one that's, of course, called baby inside. So, mother two are kind of curious about me, but when they see me, they run. They just, they're, they're wild. See, she's making her move. But this one here, I picked this one up yesterday, petted it, loved on it, gave it a little flea spray, still got the fleas. But I can actually pick it up. And uh, so, yeah, the little gray one. That's her name. Little G.O. Little gray one. That's that. Uh, I never really named that kitten. Of course, Lucky's always making an appearance in my videos. <laughs> he's uh, he's kind of weird with cats. Look at him. He wants to play. Look at him. He just wants to play with her. And Sam, too, is like, what the hell does this dog want? I just want to play. You better watch it. She's going to claw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she is not the the the, the aggressive, the most aggressive cat here. She's more timid, but you can see she's being right now in a defensive mode. She's not really worried about her about him. It's kind of funny to watch it though. <laughs> Angus, Angus Burger, come here, Angus Burger. Yeah, he's named after Angus, uh, the lead guitar player. ACDC, my son's a fan of ACDC. I took him to see a couple bands when he was younger. And look at that. Hey, how you doing? Are you okay? <laughs> nah, he's not okay. He's a casualty of war. Here's that great kid just ran right by me. And them other ones won't do that. Here's that one hiding under the Vermont. She's mean and boy, she just turned her head. She's scared death of me. Hey, baby, I won't hurt you. But you know, you got to re literally reach out down and grab one, and they're going to throw a fit, and then you just got to calm them down, you know, like I did with this gray one. And I was able to, you can see her, she's, she's not leaving. And I can walk right up to her. See that? Look at that. I can literally reach down and touch her sometimes, too. <laughs> she's not 100% my buddy yet but she will be before it's over with she will be my buddy <laughs> I love my animals and she's just a wild one there's three wild ones out here so guys check out our friends uh, J.B. Phillips Axis Auto Parts uh, super cool guy man just love that man. The bald guy. My buddy. Axis Auto Parts. Go to his channel. Subscribe. Hit the bell button. And check out his cool RTs he just got. He got a 77 or 78 uh, Plymouth. Or no. Dodge Aspen RT. One of the last RTs on the planet. RT stands for Road and Track. So he's got two of them. He got one for parts. The 78 is a parts car. The 77 is his, you know, baby. So. Check out his channel. He's got cars, trucks, parts for sale, old stuff, new stuff. I mean, late model stuff, old school stuff, you know. He's got everything, man. If you guys are into cars and parts, you need parts, see Actions Auto Parts. Uh, subscribe to his channel. Hit the bell button down there. And also, Auto Salvage Outlaws, our new friends. Check out their channel. Subscribe to them. Uh, they're up a few, so... You know, we're trying to help them, too. And, of course, our number one guy, Scott Speed Shop, my friend, Jedediah, my personal friend. I got to meet him back in March at the uh, Indy Swap Meet at the Indy Show in Indianapolis at the Indy uh, Anna State Fairgrounds. I got to meet my hero. Check out Scott Speed Shop. We also like Bad Tree Productions with J-Bo and Blake and Jeremy. Two Hacks Garage, our friend Jeff. We met him at the Indiana Swap Meet, too. The Indy Swap Meet. Check out our friends. <clears throat> and we'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.
I still like that car, man. The car is just bad to the bone. Ooh, Plymouth Roadrunner. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.